In this video, I'm going to show how we can use XPath in C Sharp to read values from an XML document. I'm going to give a quick overview here in PowerPoint, and then we're going to jump right into business. So first of all, why XPath? It's an easy way to find something that you want in XML. And you can do this with something like a website that I have here. You can do it with some really good text editors. And you can also do it programmatically in C Sharp, Java, and several other programming languages. So a couple definitions we want to start with, and then I'll show you the equivalent C Sharp term. A node is something in XML that you can select. That could be an element, an attribute, text, comment, namespace, in other words, anything in that XML file. And then XML tends to be hierarchical with one parent that has children and then grandchildren and so on and so forth. So we can describe the relationship between these items as we would any other kind of a relationship that is parent, child, sibling, ancestor, etc. In Visual Studio, we can read an XML document using something called DOM or the document object model, which essentially takes that XML document, which is a text file, reads it into memory and converts it into objects. And the advantage there is that objects have methods that we can call. So here's a look at some of the big XML tools that are provided to us as part of the system.xml namespace in C Sharp and also a lot of the other Visual Studio style languages. So first of all, an XML reader, give me a file stream and some settings and I'll read in the document one line at a time. Next, the big one, XML node. Node is kind of an ambiguous term. If you ask your mom, your dad, your son, your daughter, what's a node? They'd probably say, I have no idea. Well, in the land of XML, a node is a thing. And it's easier to explain when you look at what the children of this XML node are. XML document represents an entire XML document. XML element represents essentially an open and closed tag and anything in between them. XML comment represents a comment. XML attribute is an attribute within an element. And then XML text is the text that you see inside of an element. In other words, XML text is what you see between the open and closed tags. So all of these things can be called an XML node. An XML node is kind of a superset of each of these different things that we would find in an XML file. As a matter of fact, sometimes we'll get back a bunch of nodes. We might have a parent and we want all of its children. In that case, we'll get back an XML node list. And that XML node list is a collection of nodes. And those nodes could be any of these five items I have here, as well as several others that I have not listed. Once we've read the document into memory, we can use our typical XML terms like this slash to navigate from one element to another and also square brackets to do some equations like give me the first item, give me anything with latitude greater than zero, or give me the last item. It gets really powerful when we combine those with our operators and we can do some mathematical expressions. So next what I'm going to do is take our existing project that I've built in a series of videos and I'm going to try out some of these XPath experiments like the examples that you see here so you can see how to programmatically do it in a C-sharp razor page application. Here's a look at the project that I've been building so far, and I'm simply going to add these XPath examples to the project. So the user can upload an XML file, and we're going to save it locally, and then we're going to read it into memory, and then we're going to validate it. And that validate step is very important because validation ensures that the XML looks like we expect it to look. And provided that the XML looks like we expect it to look, we can use our XPaths to get values out of the XML because we know where things are going to be. So reading in the document and then validating it, let's go ahead and do our XPath queries after we validated the document so that we can have some assurance that we know what we're looking at. You might see something that looks a bit familiar here. Remember XML document from our presentation? That's the in-memory object representation of the XML. So this is where we can start our queries. I can say doc dot select single node and then inside of here I can provide one of our XPath examples. We'll start with plants and then go to specimens and then go to specimen but we want a very specific specimen. We want a specimen in the northern hemisphere. So we'll say latitude is greater than zero. That being north of the equator and then from there, let's walk down the comments. Now, before I actually run this, let's take a look at our XML document and let's visualize what this is going to select. We start with plant. From there, we go to specimens. 
we see that there are four specimens and let's look for one with latitude greater than one. Looks like we have a couple, one of these in Cincinnati and then this one in London. Then these two are from the Southern Hemisphere. Since I'm saying select single node, I anticipate that it will only pick one of those. The trick is it's going to return a variable of type XML node. So we'll say XML node northern specimen. The only trick is that this is data type XML node. So we're not actually looking at the content just yet. To get the content, we need to take one more step. Northern specimen dot inner text. This X path that we have is actually going to select an entire element. And you can see that element is right here. We don't care about the element with the comments on the beginning and the end. What we actually want is just this text right here. So that's what we're getting with this inner text attribute. We're saying, okay, go ahead and walk down to that location and then give me the text that's inside. We can save that into a variable. We'll say string comments equals northern specimen inner text. And we could even take that data and push that back to a page and maybe show the comments on the page, something like that. Let's look at a few other things that we can do while we're here. First of all, doc, we know that's the document element. What happens when we say doc, doc document element, dot child notes? So that should give us all of the children at this level and it's a fairly high level. So we can't store it into a single object. We need to store it into a list. And there's a special type that we can use for this, XML node list. Let's give that a name as well. We'll say old children. Old children because they're kind of at the very top. It's kind of like the, the great ancestors of the entire thing. One more, I want to select multiple nodes again, but I want to do it with an XPath this time. So let's start again with doc, which remember that represents our XML document is defined up here. And then we'll say dot select nodes. And now let's give this an XPath. We'll say plant specimens specimen. Once again, let's take a look at how that looks on our XML and see what we're going to get. We're get. We start with plant, we go to specimens, and then we go to specimen. So I'm anticipating that we're going to get multiple entries from the area that I've highlighted here. We will need to save this into an XML node list again, and we'll call that one specimens. So we see that we're able to read and parse data out of our XML document. We're not doing a whole lot with it right now aside from just looking at it, but we do know that we can use this to find data within the XML document. And there again, we can do that when we know what the XML document looks like after it's gone through and passed validation. So with all this being said, let's go ahead and take a look. The page is rendered. I go to import. Select an XML document that I know is valid, and indeed, this is the one that we were looking at earlier. Now I'm going to step through these first few lines relatively quickly because I covered them in a previous video. They're not necessarily related to this one. We're essentially just reading in the document, writing it to local storage, reading it in memory using our document object model on line 42 and 43, doing a bit of validation, We'll see when we walk through the validation that indeed it did validate against the XSD, which is good news. Now we're going to come down and take a look at our XPath expressions. One note on line 47, I paused the video for a moment because I realized I misspelled plant. I call it plants, plural, when it should be plant singular. So one little fix I made off camera, but nonetheless, XPath will work and that's the whole idea. So I choose F10 and what do we have in Northern Specimen? We see that it's walking down to the element name comments. We see beautiful tree. So let's go back to our XML and see which one it grabbed. No surprise here, it grabbed the very first one in the Northern Hemisphere, this one somewhere around Cincinnati. And you notice that it grabbed the comment beautiful tree. Now, once again, this is in an XML node variable type, which is good for reading a document, but not necessarily for doing things like string manipulation. So in line 48, we take that node, we get the inner text, and we save that into a more common data type that we understand, one called string. I go ahead and choose F10, and we should see that comments is now filled with what? Beautiful tree. And we come back over to our XML document, and we validate that it says beautiful tree on that one specimen that has a latitude greater than one. Now let's keep walking and doc. Remember doc represents our entire XML document and we're asking it for its child nodes. 
I anticipate that we're going to get a very high level set of elements here, like these right here, that are directly under plant. By the way, the document element in XML, many times that's what we call the element that begins and ends an XML document. And because an XML document is hierarchical, there should be only one element that begins and ends an entire XML document. So that's kind of assumed there. Nonetheless, let's walk over and see what old children are. And again, old children just because they're very high level. So we expand and we see that there are 11 of them. Now let's go to results view and see if we recognize anything. Genus, species, common name, height, begin bloom date, end bloom date, edible sun tolerance, bloom color, and specimens. And that's it. And if we take a look, sure enough, those are genus, species, common, height, begin, end, edible sun tolerance, bloom color, specimens. So you notice that it has only given us children at this one level, one step down from the document element. It hasn't bothered to go and get further nested elements, but we certainly can walk down and get those elements if we wish. Let's take a look at one more example, this XML node list of specimens. I choose F10. And specimens, if we look at this, we see count four, then we see results view, element name specimen. We can expand this. And we'll see something that looks a bit familiar. 3947 minus 8451. Now let's go to the next element and see if we recognize anything here. This one, 52.40 and then 1.00 in Joe Blogs. We'll go to the next element. And I think you can kind of see where we're going. Guillermo Sanchez, minus 2250, minus 6285. And no surprise, the very last element's going to be fairly predictable as well. David Jones, wonderful specimen. We come back and we take a look, and guess what we did? We've just grabbed these specimen children. And how did we do it? We started at the high-level document. We walked the X path down to where those specimens are. And then we said, give me all nodes. So we've seen how we can read an XML document and read it into these node and node list types. And we've also seen how we can go one step further and take a node and ask for its inner text and turn it to a string. This is where XML gets really powerful because if we give our customers, our users, an XSD schema template that represents the XML, and then they give us a file that matches that template, we know exactly where we can go in that document to find the information that we need in a predictable manner. As always, I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.